this is somewhat of a complex configuration, so a very difficult tear to repair with traditional methods, but you will see with the sequent, we will be able to have a vertical stitch, a vertical oblique stitch to be able to address this tear and thus save the meniscus. Plus we'll be able to span the uh, popliteus with this single device. Put your probe in here. How much am I going to need to allow me to penetrate and then deploy my implant cleanly, not into tissue? I'm very comfortable cutting this to two centimeters. And I'm cutting that at two. Should be a nice clean cut. So cannula into the joint and then seat on the cannula. Now we can see our implants in position. I'm going to come over top here to where I want to place that initial stitch. And then I go through. Here is my trigger. I'm then going to deploy that first implant. I'm going to wiggle, come back. I like to make sure that I'm facing down with the tip of my needle so that as I come back it wants that to stay in position. And so I'm out now with my first one. So we see our suture has been placed with the implant now sitting on the back of the menisco capsular junction. What I want to do here is I want to come back, make sure I have slack in the system. And here's, I'm giving myself till I come pretty close to that, to the edge here. So a nice loop. I would like my first stitch to be close to a vertical, vertical stitch. And so I'm still in, remember, that freewheel mode so that nothing is locked in the system. And then I'm going to go through the meniscus. We've gone through, so you can see I've still got some slack in my suture, which is important. I'm now going to rotate two revolutions. Why do I rotate two revolutions? Because that is going to allow me then to lock the cleating system on the back. So this is a linkage system, but each link has its own locking. So it's a very stable construct. Take off the safety on our trigger. Click it forward. You heard the click. Then I'm going to pull this back to deploy my implant. I just slightly turn this, turn this down as I come out. It's a gentle move. Now we see our looped suture. I'm coming back. Red button on. So now I've taken it out of freewheel mode. I've got tension in the system. And then I have my little ratchet wheel here. You see how it's taking the slack out of the suture. And I'm going to want to go right up close to where it's coming out of the meniscus. So I don't have a lot of wiggle waggle in the system. And then I gradually then pull on this. And you'll see how this has a lot more propensity for controlling the slack. See how I've taken out the slack here, the system, but yet I don't have two suture strands where I'm tightening one and the other one is staying slack, so risk of puckering. I can adjust this tension very finely here to make that determination of do I feel this is adequate? Is it too tight or too loose? Because I don't want the meniscus puckered against the articular surface. This is a linkage system, so I want to repair with tension but not over tension and now I'm going to take off my ratchet wheel so I go into free wheel mode to allow me then to re-establish the loop that I want and now we're going to go through the top cusp there and as I go through I'm going to want to drop my hand again and then I'm going to pierce the meniscus I'm going to do my two rotations and we can see how that's then starting to take the slack out of the system I activate my triggering mechanism. Then I'm going to deploy my implant. I'm going to come back slowly now. And there we come in back with my hand staying down. And that's my position. And we can then go to ratchet mode, red on for ratchet to retake the tension out of our system. Ratchet up to, right to the aperture there. And you can see here nicely then ratcheting back. We can see then, look at then how we've got this apposition. You see we've got a V configuration here now, bringing that meniscus nicely together. Now I'm wanting to go into freewheel mode. 
come back to give myself more slack. That bluntness of having my implant right at the apex of the needle is really protecting my penetration here where I'm going. I'm going to then go rotate my two revolutions. Then I'm wanting to fire my implant. You heard the click of it firing. Okay, now I've got my suture across. You can see there's our vertical, our vertical oblique. And then I'm going to go right into ratchet mode here. And then we're going to tension. And you can see here I've got four implants for three stitches. Now if this was a traditional all inside and I wanted three stitches, I would have six implants now in the back of the meniscus. You've got less material inside the knee, less potential for failure, less potential for irritation. So there are some, some definite pros as to what we're doing here. So now I'm going to go again into freewheel mode so I can establish some length. And then I'm going to come over top again to place my next one. And so if I think, whoa, this is going to be a little bit hard to access there, that maybe I want to switch portals. Am I stuck? No, I'm not, because all I'm going to do now is come out with my device, cut it, retie it, and switch portals. I still have three implants left, which will let me then put in two stitches, and there's a tremendous amount of versatility here. So I'm in freewheel mode. I'm going to come out, and then we're lock on this ratcheting so I've got tension within the system. Knot cutter here will slip on. So I'm going to cut here. Nicely cut and come out. Now I just try a traditional figure of eight loop here and that figure of eight loop will then be on the end. And we'll cut that place. I'm in ratchet mode so all I do then is ratchet my suture down to the implant. Disengage the cannula so that we can then reintroduce the cannula just like we did before to where we want to be. And then I bring that cannula back, lock it on. This is the same device, but I have the capability now to, to place my stitches. And you see how my improved accessibility here. Freewheel mode. I want to miss the popliteal tendon. So I go through, pierce. You have to make sure, though, since we've switched, that we activate the trigger. Fire. And then I like this to be facing down as I come out. So remember, I'm in freewheel mode. And then I'm thinking, where am I next? I'm probably going to be about here. So I come back, give myself a little slack. So here I go in, penetrate. Then I'm going to rotate two revolutions to lock my cleating system. I activate my trigger. And then I fire my implant. Come on back. And then you can see my suture in position here. I need to go into ratchet mode. So red for ratchet. Go take out my slack now. Right till I get up to the, close to the implant. And then just go slow always in this part. Tensioning down, is it nice and tight yet? A little bit more, there we go. So you can see now there, there we're starting to get good apposition and not getting any puckering of our meniscus. And so I've got one more stitch. I'm going to go into freewheel mode. I want to come into this area up here, away from the popliteal tendon. So I'm thinking, where am I going to go? Right here. So I pierced. I'm going to rotate. My two revolutions, that's locking my cleating device. Activate my trigger. Fire the trigger. Come out now, making sure I'm staying down. And I'm going to go into ratchet mode. And we're going to tension that. So I'm ratcheting. And then you see how I'm getting this. I don't want to get pucker. So I got nice coaption there. And that I'm happy with because I don't want to do any more tension than that. Okay, to cut it, we'd reproduce exactly what I showed you before. Ratchet off. So we're in the freewheel mode, coming out of the knee. It is a zero hi-fi suture. That's a high tensile strength suture. It doesn't have a central core. Why is that important? It's less prone to cut the meniscus. To give you a cheese cutter effect, it will lay flat down on the surface. 
and then we cut. And I can see here that we have a very, very pretty repair of the meniscus. We used our single device to give us repair here, give us stability. It's an interlinked system, so there is no individual sutures that are going to cause issues. And we can see here, nicely coapted. We've already got a synovial response. So very, very happy with our uh, configuration. We'll look at that from the other orientation here. And I think you can see how smooth the meniscus surface is. You're not seeing the traditional puckering that you'd be concerned with with this. And so we have helped save a lateral meniscus that if we had done a lateral meniscectomy here, not only are we jeopardizing the ACL, but we're significantly jeopardizing that lateral compartment. And this was done with one device with six stitches, seven implants, as opposed to six stitches, 12 implants, no posterior incision required, so no risk to neurovascular structures, and very time efficient because we don't have to keep getting new devices to do this. So I think uh, very, very happy with this repair.